What if you could live longer? What if there were things you could do every day to maximize your time on this earth? Well, this guy seems to have it figured out because at 101 years old, he's still active and healthy. Let's see how he does it. This is Mike Fremont. He's 101, has multiple world records running marathons, does daily pull-ups, and he's Diamond 2 in League of Legends. Look, I'm clean up the map! I'm joking. After making a video with Brian Johnson, who's trying the latest tech to slow down his aging, we thought, what can we learn from someone who's actually lived to 100, besides the obvious stuff, like eat healthy and exercise? And what we found was quite eye-opening. You may think people get to 100 years old because they just have healthier habits, but oftentimes, the opposite was actually true. Peter Thiel talks about this study of 500 subjects who were around the age of 100. A large portion of them drank alcohol and smoked. I just sit and smoke sometimes 12 cigars a day. Many were overweight, and the males were less likely to have exercised regularly than their peers. Two doctors have told me that if I drink it, I will die, but they died first. Their actual secret? Lucky genetics. Obviously, genetics play a huge part of pretty much everything in your life. Some of these people that are, you know, drinking and smoking in their old age, you know, obviously not everyone would be able to do that, but some people just have the right genetics to live that long. To get lucky, you know, you might live longer, and if you don't, then, uh... Peter Atiyah outlines three dimensions. The first one is cardio in zone two and zone five. Zone two being long sustained efforts at a lower heart rate, which means aerobic exercises like running, swimming, biking at a pace where you can still have a conversation. So pretty easy. Just a couple 30 minute sessions a week if you're new to this, make a big difference because one of the most significant hallmarks of aging is a decline in the number and quality of a mitochondria. So there's a whole lot of sciencey stuff behind why cardio is good for you. Not only is it fantastic for burning calories and losing weight but it's also good for your heart it's good for everything i don't need to tell you this you guys already know this hopefully we're going to get into some more uh you know interesting uh ways that this guy is staying alive because uh you know do your cardio and eat well and exercise uh, we all know that but l let's figure out if there if there's some secret that we're missing out on second dimension is strength, so lifting weights, to build muscle and bone density now and maintain it, because regaining muscle is much harder later in life. One study looked at seniors who engaged in a program of strength training and found that even after six months of pure strength training, half of the subjects did not gain any muscle mass. So building muscle now is like investing in your retirement. Obviously, the older you get, the more difficult it's going to be to put on muscle. I mean, that's why when you're young, you want to, you know, take advantage of that and, you know, try to get as fit and as healthy as you can to set yourself up for success in the future. This dude is the perfect example of no excuses. I see people who are entering their 20s that can't do a single pull up or even push up. Meanwhile, this old guy is still kicking and working hard. What a champ. I'm 21 years old. I am in the prime of my life. I'm very young, very healthy. If I'm going to still be able to do what I'm doing now at 100, that's going to be fantastic. But yeah, this guy is a prime example of if you wanted to you could i mean there are so many people out there who are you know my age or a little bit older but but still not a hundred years old that are out making excuses oh i can't you know i can't get into better shape i can't better myself i can't do this been hitting the gym you know i just got back from the gym a few hours ago um so you know i'm feeling good looking good um that's debatable if you're out there watching this right now and you are under the age of 101 years old which uh, i bet you you probably are start now if you haven't already take control of your life your physical health and it, you'll thank yourself in the future because it's going to help you out a lot and, unless you don't want to live longer unless unless you want to die early and then in that case you can continue being a fat piece of the third dimension is the most important and the most overlooked, which is stability, which simply means having control over our bodies. First of all, without stability, in old age, you can fall, which is the leading cause of injury-related death among seniors. I got you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. You may not be at risk for falling now, but stability is actually even more important at a younger age. You may currently have bad posture, whether it's your hip flexors from too much sitting, being hunched over at your laptop, and over the years, that eventually leads to an injury that puts us out for months. We think injuries are this sudden thing because we did one exercise wrong or we got off the chair the wrong way, but it's usually a result from months or years of instability. If you continue accumulating this damage over decades, you have more pain and more injuries at an older age. That's not a branch of fitness that people talk about too much, but it's very interesting to, to think about. You know, obviously in your old age, falling over is not going to be good. I mean, falling over at any time is, is not great, but, but as you get older, you know, if you were to take a fall, it's a lot harder to catch yourself and recover from that fall. So if you have good balance and good stability and you, you know you work on that and train that you know throughout your life, 
then you're going to be a lot better off. For me growing up, I was on the trampoline pretty much every single day, uh, flipping and tricks and that kind of stuff was a huge part of my childhood. There's definitely tons of different ways to, you know, practice stability. I would love to get back into that kind of stuff now. It's been a while. I think about two years ago, I filmed a video with my girlfriend and we went to a trampoline park and we were just like messing around doing some flips. That was quite fun. That was the first time I had done flips in many many years and then now it's been another two years and i think the most i've done is maybe a little backflip on our trampoline that i set up that's old and is breaking apart a lot of my early videos were trampoline related stuff and tricks and flips and stuff so if you guys want to see more of that kind of come back and have it like a full circle moment here let me know in the comments but uh, i would be down to kind of you know get more into that as another branch of fitness i think that'd be super cool although that does sound like way too much cardio for me um he's vegan it's, yeah, vegan. He doesn't eat animals. Is that the answer to his longevity? This is where a lot of people disagree. What are we making? Uh, sweet corn mixed with chopped up onion. Now, according to Mike, his vegan diet is the number one key to his health. For good reason. He was diagnosed with cancer at 69, was given only three months left to live, and stumbled upon the cancer prevention diet by Michio Kushi, which talks about a macrobiotic diet based on Zen Buddhism, which means no animal products with lots of anecdotal evidence, a lot of cancer survivors who swear by it, and he himself was cancer-free a few months later. Seems like it worked for him. Yeah, we say this diet has very mixed opinions on, you know, whether people agree that this is the best diet to go by, you know, this is the reason that he's living so long. Uh, it, it really depends on your situation. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, oh, you gotta go vegan, or never go vegan is terrible. I myself am not vegan. I think for most of the population, going vegan is not the answer. Let me know in the comments if you disagree with that. I'd love to hear you guys' opinion on that but for me personally uh, i don't think veganism is a very great diet obviously it works for some people you know he had cancer and you know he went through a very specific diet to you know try to help him but you know just just for your average joe you know if you're trying to either lose weight or build muscle or stay healthy or just live a regular normal life whatever i think eating a balanced diet is going to be your best bet you know your your proteins from meats uh you know your carbs fats just, just kind of eating everything a little bit of everything your vegetables your fruits is going to be a lot better than you know being vegan or vegetarian or paleo or all these like fad diets i don't think that's the answer i think the majority of cases if you're trying to lose weight gain muscle anything eat a balanced diet. First of all, the amount of calories. Less calories generally means better longevity, which Brian Johnson also talked about, and Mike also seems to be eating very light meals. Caloric restriction seems beneficial for preventing the cancer horsemen and also maintaining metabolic health, which affects all the other horsemen as well. So don't overeat, but he says also, definitely don't be undernourished. It really depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to someone who's overweight, obviously, they need to cut down their calories and eat less to get to a healthy body fat percentage. And that's going to help you live longer, be healthier, be happier, be feel better, everything. If you are severely underweight, what you need to do is eat more calories to get up to a healthy weight. So for me, I'm just under six foot two. And a few years ago, I was like 130 pounds, which is severely underweight for how tall I am. And that was not healthy. Obviously being overweight isn't healthy. We all know that being underweight is also not healthy. It comes with its own unique problems. So, you know, neither is good. So for me, the answer was not eating less calories because that would have been even worse and I would have just started eating away at the muscle in my body and I would have literally just been skin and bone and that that is not good so the answer for me was to eat more calories and now I am just under 160 pounds I weighed myself like two days ago and I was 158.6 I'm obviously still trying to gain a little bit more weight in muscle finding that middle ground of about 10 to 20 percent body fat is going to be your best bet anything over 20 percent and you might want to look at losing weight and anything under 10 I mean unless you're doing a body building show you probably want to look at gaining a little bit of weight and you're going to feel better look better be better and uh probably live longer protein out of the three macronutrients peter says this is the most important one you have to be able to let food go i just have the tofu oh. gotta get at least the protein come on usually you need way more protein than you think the recommended average is of course it does vary per person but a general rule of thumb is one gram of protein for each pound of body weight the key is to maintain muscle because again muscle is a huge predictor for longevity more muscle means you're able to exercise more into old age which means you're probably going to live longer. All right, so he's talking about protein intake. Obviously, we all know protein is good for you. It's also very filling. So if you're trying to eat less food and lose weight, eating more protein in your diet will help you feel more satiated, feel more full, and it'll make you reach for the snacks, you know, the, the carbs, the fats, that kind of stuff less. Obviously, it's going to be good for building muscle. What are you saying? One gram of protein per pound of body weight is generally a pretty good idea. An extra note I like to say is that's lean 
body mass. Let's say you're 300 pounds and very overweight and most of that weight is in fat. You don't need to eat 300 grams of protein a day. In that case, let's say you're 170 pounds of lean muscle and you have 130 pounds of fat on you. You don't need to eat an extra 130 grams of protein a day because that's just not necessary. In that case, you do 170 and you'd be golden. If you're at least getting close to that, that's good enough. A lot of people way underestimate the amount of protein they get in a day and are eating nowhere close to that. So if you're like 0.8 or 0.7, you know, grams per pound, that that's close enough. Bad sleep is the biggest factor that can lead to all four horsemen because you won't stick to your diet. You're not likely to exercise if you're in bad sleep and increases risk of Alzheimer's because it just makes your brain go floppity boop. Yeah, it quickly mentions sleep. Obviously, we all know again. Okay, I I'm hoping the last one is something that's a little bit more... Uh, you know, unique because all of this so far is pretty basic knowledge. I mean, eat good, exercise good, uh, you know, sleep good. All of these things we all pretty much know. If you're not getting a good sleep, it's it's gonna be rough for you later in life. It's gonna be rough for you even now. You know, uh, building muscle with low sleep is very difficult. Uh, sleep is when you build the muscle. You're not building it in the gym. You're tearing it down in the gym. And then when you sleep is when you build it back up. So if you're not getting a good night's sleep, for me, I like to get eight and a half to nine hours. I like a little bit extra sleep. For most people, seven to eight is probably pretty good. But for me, I like to get a little bit extra sleep just to make sure I'm fully recovered because I'm at the gym five days a week. So I want to make sure that I'm fully, you know, rested and feeling ready for my next day. I have no idea. Wow, they're so cute. Oh, they, they took a picture of you too. <laughs> <laughs> but as we spent more time with Mike, it became clear to me what the biggest factor to his longevity was. We haven't touched on this in our previous video about longevity, but it's probably the most important thing. Practice safe, son. <laughs> you see how important it is to be married. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm working on it. Mike had his fair share of heartbreaks. His first wife passed away, leaving him with multiple kids. His second wife left him, but still at age 70, he got married again with Marilyn, and they've been together for 30 years now. I wouldn't be anybody if it weren't for Marilyn. But that's what marriages are for, my God. This is why Peter Atia talks about the importance of emotional health. We're experiencing an all-time high of depression, fewer marriages, more loneliness overall, and loneliness kills. The people who were the most satisfied in their relationships at age 50 were the healthiest at age 80. Good relationships keep us happier and healthier period all right so there is kind of the cherry on top of everything you know we all know the good sleep we all know all of that but being in a good relationship you know having someone there for you to you know experience life together and to grow together and to help each other and be there for each other that seems to be one of the most important things for living a long healthy happy life i think it's worth noting he's 100 and still has his wife having someone to live for is huge absolutely you hear all the time when an old couple has a loss of one of them the other one is soon to follow so this guy having his wife of now 30 years i'm sure when one of them goes the other will be soon to follow which is sad but it's great that right now they still have each other. I'm going to spit some quick relationship advice for you guys. A lot of people think that they need to grow into the person that they're meant to be, you know, you know, succeed in their job, succeed with this and this and this, and then they're going to be able to find the perfect person and, you know, live happily ever after. The best thing you can do is grow together. A lot of people seem to think that they need to go through life, you know, figure things out, get their shit together and then find someone. But a lot of the times, if you've, you know, gone through, you know, the, the big steps of life, you know, alone, uh, it's going to be very hard to find someone to fit into, you know, your life that you've built by yourself. It's going to be a lot easier to meet someone, go through life together and, you know, grow together and work together. That's going to create a relationship that is is going to last forever because if you're able to, you know, grow through different stages of your life together and learn and, you know, grow as people together, then there's really not much you can't get through. So yeah, me and my girl about to come up on three years together, which is pretty awesome uh, coming up in like three months, which is crazy. Uh, we're going to be going on to our fourth year together, which is just absolutely insane to think that it's has been that long. But yeah, it's been great. You know, we are so different than when we were, you know, three years ago. I was 18 and she was 19 when we met. And now I am 21. She's 22, turning 23. And, you know, obviously in that time of our lives, things have changed, but we've been able to grow together and, you know, understand that, you know, we're both here for each other. We both want the best for each other. And I think that's really important. Hopefully we're both going to live to be 101 like this guy and, uh, you know, be still 
doing pull-ups and push-ups and working out and doing all this at that old age that'd be that'd be crazy that's about all i have for today sorry about the lack of videos over the last like month i think i mentioned briefly in my last video that i got into a car accident someone ran into me totaled both our cars uh so the past month has been you know a lot of resting healing you know to make sure i'm you know feeling good and stuff after that uh, but also dealing with insurance and all that it's been a lot of stress over the last month so there's been a lack of content i've been working on filming a 30-day challenge video so that's going to be coming out pretty soon but uh yeah i apologize about the lack of videos hopefully there's going to be more coming soon anyway i just wanted to mention that for any of you guys sticking around to the end but anyway thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys uh later so yeah like the video subscribe peace out